Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in today's second video. Go and have a look at where the next 10 to 14 days for today's second video, day 10, is going to take us to the uh, 6th of January. And we'll be able to extend out beyond that. It's a GFS and ECM ensembles and may run a couple weeks. Have a look at CFSE 2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. That'll get us into the middle to second half of January. I shall get on that for you in a moment. Just to say, the first bit of the was our 7 a.m. upload. So uh, have a look at that if you have not yet done so. Please like, share, subscribe on the video. Thank you so much, everybody. Hope you're having a lovely bank holiday Monday. Christmas bank holiday Monday, of course. Uh, right, okay, just going to very quickly start in the stratosphere. This is how things are currently looking in terms of stratospheric temperatures. We did a lot on this yesterday, so I don't want to go too in-depth into this of uh, today's video. But, say, we have got a very cold stratospheric temperature, 10 HPA over North Pole at the moment, indicated by those dark blue and purple colours, down to around minus 80, which is significantly, uh, you know, colder than average this time of year, albeit this is the coldest point of the year, uh, generally. Uh, we have got a bit of a warming though going on over Siberia in the stratosphere. That's very minor. Uh, warming. Let's see what the latest GFS run does. So it develops its second warming uh, from the Atlantic into the uh, west of Europe. And uh, it starts to push out uh, up towards uh, Russia and Siberia as we go into the first week of January. And that actually becomes quite an intense warming, uh, to be honest. So uh, we get through to around the uh, around day 10, which is the 6th of January. That is quite a significant warming of stratosphere. That is not a sudden stratospheric warming, though. For To reach the requirement of a sudden stratospheric warming, a gen genuine SSW, uh, we need to get the red colours appearing on these charts. So we need to generally go to freezing or, you know, round freezing or a little bit above freezing with, with the red colour. So we're, we're shy of that. Uh, and again, it's over Siberia. It's not over the North Pole either. So this won't have any direct impact on the polar vortex and its roots in the stratosphere. It will lift the temperature up a little bit by the look of it bow in the stratosphere. We push the coldest of temperatures more towards the um, Canadian side of green. So we will see the temperature lifting up a bit, but it's not going to be enough, uh, you know, enough to, to have an impact on the troposphere. Um, it's not reaching that sort of level. Of course, it might be that this gets developed further, though, by the GFS. This is 10 days away and we've got to keep an eye on it, see whether this warming, uh, which is quite a significant warming, but it's shy of a sun traffic warming, but maybe that will get developed a little bit uh, further in, in the next couple of days. So we've got to keep an eye on that and, uh, um, you know, uh, see whether it starts pushing towards the pole itself. So it's a significant warming of the stratosphere over Siberia that we have there, but the caveats are it isn't yet a sudden stratosphere when it's not reaching uh, the, the temperature level for that. And, uh, and it's short of what would be classed as a genuine um, SSW, therefore. And also, it's over Siberia. It's not over the North Pole. And it's 10 days away. So, it might get upgraded. It could get downgraded. Uh, beyond that, we see that the will sort of phase away a little bit. But notice it does kind of displace. It's enough to kind of displace the polar vortex. It's roots more towards uh, the Atlantic side of, of the pole. Uh, and the temperature does lift up quite a bit. Bearing in mind, that in the pole at the moment, we're starting off around minus 80. We go to around minus 60 to minus 50, something like that, over the North Pole. So, you know, quite a, quite a lift up in the temperature, albeit not enough to directly impact uh, the troposphere and, and uh, you know, not, not enough to get get rid of the polar vortex, but certainly, uh, certainly interesting developments. It might be a signal that later on in the winter, even if this one doesn't make it as a sun traffic warming, later on, we may get a, a you know, a sun traffic warming. We are expecting one this winter due to the ECQBO and other factors. So it's just one to watch at the moment. Uh, right, CT is currently looking at, like this at 5.9, that's 1.1 degree uh, above average, that's provisional to yesterday to uh, Boxing Day. So that's holding steady. That's going to start rising, though, over the next uh, few days. going to have a very mild end to December. And so we're expecting this, uh, finally, at the end of the month, month saying to finish up around 6.5, which will be, uh, you know, get another very mild, uh, very mild December. Uh, GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles look like this. So the red line is a 30 year upper air temperature average for Birmingham, starting off above our jump of over. And it's going to get even milder as we get into towards the new year period. We are going to have an exceptionally mild spell at the end of December and into the opening days of January. Then coming down, but not going cold, just reducing to a more sensible level of mild. However, we have got quite a lot of scatter as we go towards the end of the first week into the second week of January. So we've got these ensemble members up here, which are mild ensemble, ensemble members. We have got colder ensemble members down here, though. 
Um, so yeah, probably straight mild into the end of the first week of January, but there is a uh, there's a possibility it might start to get a little bit colder by the time you get through the second week of January. That's all a very long way off, of course. If you're immediate future, it's going to be really mild, if not warm. So temperature anomaly on the 27th of December, 4th of January, really significantly above average. Precipitation anomaly on the 27th of December, 4th of January, are near normal. The latest wind flow map from EarthNoldSchool.net shows that we're continuing to uh, bring in southwesterly winds, especially towards some areas of the boats. And so that is the reason temperatures are getting milder. OK, so let's start having a look at some chart data then, shall we? We're going to start off here with the uh, UK at Euro bringing up a very, very mild southwest wind, long fetch southwest from the Azores on Thursday. So we might get temperature into mid teens Celsius from Thursday into New Year's Eve. There will be rain involved with that. Uh, New Year's Day looks like that again, exceptionally mild, pumping up those southwesterly wings. And that carries on all the way up to uh, a week out, midnight on Monday. By which time our low pressure begin to roll in off the Atlantic, just starting to cut off the warmest of that southwesterly wind. So that's like go. That's still mild. It's Atlantic driven, but it's like a more sensible level of mild. You see what I mean? Whereas this is like exceptional mild because of how warm uh, the air is and how far south the air is coming from, all the way up like that. Uh, you know, it's like coming from south of the Azores, like Canary Islands or Madeira, somewhere like that. So, so that's exceptional warm. This is just general mild, you know, just standard uh, mild uh, with winds in from a westerly direction. That's how I was get to with the, mid, uh, with the uh, midnight UK Met Euro. Uh, we'll also have a look, though, at ICON. We are including ICON in our model uh, round up now, as it did so well before Christmas. So this is how ICON is looking. This is DWD, by the way, the German model. But ICON is looking like this uh, with uh, a long fetch southwest in there on Thursday, and that goes on into New Year's Eve and New Year's Day as well. By Sunday into the uh, start of next week, Monday, we begin to turn wind more into west. We cut off that exception by southwesterly. Um, so that's how it looks as we get as far as we go with ICON, which is to Monday the 3rd of January, where we're a little bit cooler, but it looks like I'm going to have another push of very mild winds from the southwest. We have got lower pressures a little bit further southwards, though. One there and one there. Jetstream is trying to move southwards, too. So maybe beyond that, the, you know, those low pressures might go in that sort of direction if the heights was to strengthen around here. But it is all ifs, buts and maybes. And to be honest, up to like the beginning of next week, anyway, it does look very mild there with Icon 2. Right, GFS, midnight run. Looks like that again, pushing up those very mild southwesterly winds at the end of week and into the new year as well. It all carries on into the early part of next week. That's how long we get to day 10. Flat bank 8, really. And uh, high pressure is still to our south. Low pressure is to the north. And inner coming most mild or very mild west to southwest winds. Beyond that, we go to the end of next week. Uh, it does turn a little bit colder as low pressure pushes into Scandinavia. And we start to bring in more of a northwesterly. So the GFS begins to go a bit colder. Uh, you know, at the end of the first week of January, and the second week of January, with this low pressure diving into Biscay, that starts to pull wind into the northeast a little bit. So, uh, but GFS does, midnight run does turn things colder into the uh, second week of January. Then, interestingly, raising the heights from the Azores up towards Scandinavia, threatening to start perhaps uh, building up a Scandinavian high, pulling in the wind to the east. But that is a very, very, very long way off. Over two weeks away. This is for GFS 6 then. Again, high pressure to our south, low pressure to our northwest. Up come those very mild southwest winds again as we go in towards the new year period. So it's all looking really mild over the new year. And into the open next week, we keep it mild, really. High pressure to the south, low pressure to the northwest. Heights are trying to rise to our north and northeast, but up to towards day 10, not able to get a foothold. It says this low pressure pushes through again, similar to the midnight run, this low just here. Uh, that sort of pushes through, and that's a bit of a game changer as that moves through in towards Scandinavia. It starts to pull wind into a colder northwesterly towards the end of the first week of January. And then the GFS 6 then also goes uh, a little bit colder as well, albeit this time it's a little bit more anti cyclone. That is, again, a colder scenario. And once again, we are trying to build the Azores high towards the Scandinavian high, so trying to raise the heights to our northeast. Um, it's inconclusive where that would go. It's possible that bridge would collapse southwards and we bring in a, a renewed push of the Atlantic. Conversely, we could get that high pressure hooked up Scandinavia 
and, you know, get a Scandinavian high going. Definitely looks like the end of the first week of January might deliver something a little bit colder. But before then, you know, for the next week anyway, uh, probably the next 10 days, it's looking solidly mild and, uh, say, around the new year, exceptionally so. GM, again, bringing up those very, very mild, if not warm, southwesterly winds. They carry on into New Year's Eve and New Year's Day as well. And uh, then, once more, this low pressure starts to push through during the early to middle part of next week. And as that one pushes through, it begins to bring something a little bit colder back in from the north by day 10. That all looks very flimsy and temporary, though. We've got this area of low pressure just here, which I suspect will probably roll in over the top of, of this uh, area of high pressure trying to reach in that direction. That is a little bit colder by day 10. And then the ECMWF looking like that. Again, during those very mild southwest winds will be New Year. Going to be a New Year heat wave down in the south. A little bit cooler, though, up in the north. And then into uh, next week again. Uh, looks very unsettled with lots of low pressure bringing heavy bouts of rain. Where it is still pretty mild all the way up to day 10, actually. 6th of January, ECM looks quite mild again. There's no sign. Uh, day 10 of uh, anything cold uh, doing there with the uh, ECM WF. This is the precipitation uh, forecast based on that ECM run from tometeo.com. You see loads of rain coming and going over the uh, next week to 10 days. We do get a drier interlude around New Year, but it doesn't last all that long. Um, let's get towards the early part of next week. It turns very unsettled. Once again, look at that low just there. That could bring a real deluge to more southern areas. That's the 4th of January. That could bring uh, some very wet weather through. And then all the way up to day 10, just generally showery. Uh, it is a little bit dry by day 10 in the south, but still quite wet up in the north. These are the options that are on the table within the ECM ensembles to day 4, day 10, which gets us to the 6th of January. 70 members of the ECM ensembles bring low pressure in off the Atlantic with high pressure to the south. So flat as a pancake, mild and westerly. 15, uh, raising heights a little bit to our west and north with a trough of low to the east. That will go a little bit colder, bringing in the wind from the north, northeast. That does include the ECM control run as well. 10, including the operational run. That's what we'll just be looking at again. Flat as Pancake, high pressure south, low pressure to the north, income those westerly winds. And then nine with high pressure ridging through the country. And that would at least be drier. Uh, and it's trying to reach up towards some uh, northern blocking, but it's still left within high latitudes. That might start to deliver some frost and fog. So you've got 17 just here, but a mild, wet, windy and westerly. They've got uh, 10 there, but a westerly as well, not quite as unsettled. So, uh, whilst that's 27 members of the ECM on Sons that are generally Wesley at day 10. And then we've got 15 just here, a 9 just there, but a more anticyclonic and will probably be colder. So, uh, that gets us to what, 24? So, 20, 27 versus 27 mild, uh, 24 colder and a little bit more anticyclonic. Um, so, you know, there is a significant minority uh, that's going a little bit colder, more anticyclonic by uh, day 10. But the majority option. It's to be mild and westerly. And then in two weeks' time, uh, these are the options that we've got. And this is going to be 11th of January, 19 members of ECM on Samuels with high pressure just to our west southwest, low pressure to our northwest. And again, we keep bringing in those westerly winds. Uh, 18, low pressure through the country. That's going to be again unsettled and relatively mild, you would have thought. And then 14 again with low pressure out to the west, some high pressure towards Scandinavia, but it's this low that's dominating weather, bringing in the winds to the west. So, by two weeks out, actually. So, there's more possibility of it being a little bit colder at day 10, but by day 14 or 15, actually, the the, the, the options all seem to be favouring quite mild weather in the ECM ensembles today. Uh, 7 3 2 finally means the 500 mm of our heights break down to week periods. The first week period will take us from 27th of December to the 2nd of January. We can have high pressure to the south, low pressure to the west and northwest, and we'll bring up those southwest winds. So very mild, if not quite warm in week here. Uh, week 2 will be the 3rd through to the 9th of January. High pressure then pulls out to our west. Trough of low pressure to our northeast. Winds go in to a northwesterly to rather northerly direction. Uh, it's actually a little bit colder, actually, but still mainly dry and anti-cyclonic. Uh, this is very anti-cyclonic. This is week 3, 10th to 16th of January. We set high pressure up right over top of the country. Uh, we are trying to reach it north a little bit, but, you know, it's not particularly cold in terms of snow and whatnot and Arctic or Siberian winds. It's just probably cold uh, from frost and fog and that kind of thing. 
And then week four goes quite interesting, though. This would be 17th to 23rd of January. The high pressure does go north in the end and sets up as a blocking feature uh, over Sc between Scandinavia and Greenland, really, which would send the wind into the east, of course. And that would potentially turns a lot colder with low pressure down here. Jet strings. So uh, by week four, we are looking colder then with winds going into the east. But bear in mind that is four weeks away and is therefore highly unreliable and probably won't verify all the caveats that you know that I have to put in. Because if it doesn't show up in four weeks' time, I will have people going absolutely, you know, ballistic at me. So uh, all caveats apply, but it does get colder probably by the fourth week. Right, we're done. If you enjoyed the video, please can you smash the like button. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to have friends about girls. Thank you so much for doing that. And drop a comment. Let's know what you think about this. And all of our videos. And thank you so much for doing this with Gaz Weather Vids. Thank you so much. Right, we're done. If you do subscribe, by the way, you're going to be see future weather content. Who won't want to do that? Uh, we're done then uh, for today's vids. We are skating back vids a little bit this week. We're in Christmas week. And, uh, you know, we will still be doing a 10 to 14 day every day. But I'm skating things back. It's all of the additions, all of the add-ons, like European Outlooks, just a forecast, you know, all of that kind of thing. Uh, they're on the back burner this week. Everything will get back to normal uh, next week, once we get beyond the back holiday Monday next week, anyway. Uh, right, okay, so we're done. Uh, please uh, like the video if you can do that. And tomorrow, we will have our 10 to 14 day as well. But as I say, no, uh, no uh, extended European outlook, you know, tomorrow. Because I am scaling things back this week. Uh, okay, so uh, that's it then for this one. Um, please uh, enjoy the rest of your day. And uh, that's all for now, though. Thanks for watching.